Hi, uh, welcome back. In this video, I will create VMs in the GCP cloud to create Couchbase cluster because our personal app won't support to create three or four virtual machines with the limitation of the RAM on that machine. So you can use any cloud. You can use uh, AWS or you can use GCP or Azure. The process is same. So let me go ahead and create a virtual machine. Compute engine, VM instances, create instance. If you don't have a GCP account or AWS account or Azure account, you can sign up or create an account with your credit card. It is free for 12 months, any cloud. You have to make sure you are using microservices as per the terms and conditions of the cloud provider. See here, uh, the GCP, I have free trial credits here. If I create the VM instances, uh, it will be charged from this amount. If you take AWS, you can get 12 months of free access for the microservice uh, VMs. Instance name, if you want to provide any instance name, can give that. I am going ahead with the uh, default name. While selecting the region, you can check the price. The price will change accordingly as per the configuration you have selected. I am going with the minimum configuration. N1 series, G1 small, 1.7 GB memory and 1 B CPU. This is the monthly estimation cost. So if you select another region, this price will change. Let me select uh, Europe, so it changes, right? Check this when you are creating a VM so that you won't get unexpected bills. Selecting US Central. Disk, I'm going ahead with uh, CentOS 7 because before this recording, I have created CentOS 8 and uh, tried to install Couchbase, but looks like there is a bug. The CentOS 8 Couchbase indexer is frequently restarting in loop. So I tried to fix it, but I couldn't. So instead of wasting time, I want to go ahead with CentOS 7. It doesn't matter what OS you are going with. Boot disk size 20 GB. Click on select. You don't need to select service account. Let's go with the default service account. Access scopes. I'll leave it as default. I'm allowing HTTP. HTTPS traffic because I want to access this VM from my local machine, from my local browser. So I'm allowing this. I want to install Couchbase and the VM is starting up. For that, I am providing a startup script. So I am disabling THP with these two commands and disabling swappiness with this command and downloading a small meta package with this command and installing that small meta package. This is the actual Couchbase server installation command. Installing a 6.5 version. I am intentionally installing this version because in the later lectures, I will show you how to upgrade it from 6.5 to 6.6. I am enabling this Couchbase service. So when the server got rebooted, it will automatically start the Couchbase. I am copying this. Paste it in the startup script, click create, VM instance creation is in progress. You can check the same from this notifications, VM is created. This is the external IP and this is the internal IP. Let's see whether you are able to connect. It won't allow you to log in because of the security concern. You can connect from this SSH prompt. We can generate a key. We can add it to the metadata of the GCP project so that we can connect it from the mobile extreme itself from our local machine. I'll go to my mobile XTERM tool and go to the tool key gen SSH key generator. I will generate a key. Click generate. Move your mouse around. It will create a public key. I'll change this comment as Kishore. If you see whatever comment we mentioned, it is appended. I'll copy this public key into the GCP project. You can type metadata and SSH keys. Click edit. I have added the public key that I have just created. Click save. Now you have to save this private key. Private key. Close this window. Now you have to configure a session with this private key. Click on new session. SSH in the remote host section. Give the username at the rate external IP address. You can get this username from the public key we have added to the metadata. SSH keys and this is the username it is showing here. In the advanced SSS settings, you have to provide the private key that we have saved earlier. Check this private key checkbox, locate the private key and click OK. Double click on it. You should be able to connect now. We can verify the RAM, CPU and the disk space. Disk we have created with 20 GB. Now let's try to access the Couchbase server from the browser. I just created the this VM 23456 by cloning this VM. I will show you in few seconds. Try to access it from 8091 port. It is not loading because there must be firewall running. So firewall is running. You have to allow this 8091 port. Go to the VPC network. Firewall. The menu may change from cloud provider to provider. But in a nutshell, you have to allow this port. So 8091 is non-encrypted port. So I am editing a HTTP rule. Hello HTTP. If you are using 18091 port, then you can edit HTTPS rule. Click edit and come down. As of now only 80 is allowed. I am adding 8091 as well. Click save. And you see it is automatically loading now. 
set up new cluster my cluster accept terms IP address it will take only internal IP address I'm going ahead with the default disk path so for now I'm selecting the only data so you can see the RAM available save and finish cluster is configured as of now only one node running with data service I have cloned these nodes from this instance itself click on the instance one instead of providing the region startup script and cpu and ram details every time you can simply create one instance and click on that instance create similar so all the settings will be cloned to the new vm let me add second data service node i'll copy the external ip for now i will join from here As you see the node is added to the cluster but it is showing a pending rebalance which means it is not actually serving the user's request. Until the rebalance is complete it will not serve user request. If you have plans to add a few more nodes don't do the rebalance because rebalance is a costly operation in terms of CPU and RAM. Add or remove all the nodes and then rebalance. So let me go ahead and add one more data service node. Add server. It is added. So now start adding index service nodes. Before adding index service node, let's change the index storage to memory optimized index storage and save. It will give some performance benefit by storing the index data into the memory, but you have to tune your indexer RAM accordingly. We can change this setting later as well, but there should not be any index service node present in the cluster. If you have already index service, you can remove them from the cluster, change this setting and add them back to the cluster adding the index service node add server since new service is introduced to the cluster it popped up this window and asking us to enter the memory allocation for the index service along with the index storage setting add the second index service node as well Now add the query service nodes. Adding the second query service node as well. Now do rebalance. It is completed very quickly because the cluster is holding no data. So there are no buckets. That's why it's completed pretty quickly. Let's load a sample bucket. From the activity tab, you can see um, sample bucket is loading. So in few seconds, you can see a few items in the bucket. You can see the ops per second on the bucket. Resident percent is based on the data on the disk versus the RAM allocated for this bucket. If you have more memory allocated than the actual disk space, all the data on the disk will be available in the memory. Then you can see the 100% resident ratio. If your data on the disk is more than the allocated RAM size for the bucket, then obviously you will see the less resident percent. You have to make sure your bucket resident percent is always more than 90 or 95 percentage. If it is 100 percent, then it is good. At least it should be more than 90 or 95 percent. Otherwise, you can see latency issues because your data will not be found in the memory and it will try to get it from the disk. So obviously latencies will get increased. Let's do a test with graceful failover and see how much time it is taking for the rebalance. When a node is failover due to power outage or a network glitch and once it came back automatically it will pop up with two options delta recovery and full recovery. We will discuss about these options later. For now I will add the server back to the cluster with delta recovery and then rebalance. The number of indexes directly affect the duration of the rebalance because during the rebalance the indexes and views got rebuilt so that will obviously take some time. 
So after this rebalance, I will delete all these indexes, again do a graceful failover and I will try to add this node back to the cluster with rebalance. And I will see how much time it is taking with indexes and without indexes. So it is completed. I am removing all the indexes. Post removal of all the indexes, I will again gracefully failover that node and add it back to the cluster with rebalance option and we'll see how much time it is taking with indexes and without indexes. Now all the indexes are removed from the cluster. Let's see any views are there. Nothing. Now again gracefully fail over the node. As you see uh, it is having three data nodes. Each one is equally taking the B buckets. Add the node back with the delta recovery. Rebalance. Now it should take less time because there are no indexes in the cluster. Since the cluster is holding very minimal data, you don't see much difference between these rebalance attempts whereas in the actual live clusters, you can see huge difference. So in case if you are doing any maintenance activity like OS patching or any maintenance activity on the, you can check with the application team and remove those indexes. Once the maintenance activity is over, you can create the indexes again. So this is applicable for non-production environment. So however, uh, for production it is not recommended. So that way maintenance activity will be completed within less time. Because if you take any live cluster, sometimes single rebalance will take 4 to 5 hours or more than that depending on the size. of. That's all. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.